you're giving me ulcers, Otto. This is really, really hard to read. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everyone! My name is Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guides, and today I'm going to talk about your stupid travel mistakes. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, last week, we talked about, or last week, I talked about some stupid travel mistakes that I've made, and I asked you guys to tell me about some of yours. and. I have had so much fun reading through these comments. It's like instead of reading a book now, uh, every day I, I open up that video and go through and read the new comments and it's just fun to, it's fun to <laughs> see, uh, yeah, to know that other people have done stupid things like I did as well. And you know, I think we can all learn out of these mistakes and uh, that makes you know, that makes the future better because uh, you learn from your mistakes and then you don't make them again and then your next trip usually will go better. I picked out some of my favorites uh, from the comments uh, and like I said, there are so many, there's no way I could sit here and read them all. It would be like, an, it would be hours of a video and people still are keeping writing every day and so uh, if you haven't seen the video yet, go to the video and uh, and just read through the comments and you can, uh, you know, there's some pretty fun and some very frustrating stories there. So we are going to get started here uh, with your stupid travel mistakes. And uh, if I didn't pick yours, thank you anyways for writing. Uh, but um, what I wanted to say is, I wonder how many people watch the video and they have a story that they thought, ooh, I should write this, but then they thought, no, I don't want other people to know that that happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna get started with the story from Abby Walters. Abby writes, I woke up one hour late from my flight home from Paris to New York City. Uh, the hotel we stayed in was 45 minutes train ride from the airport. We rushed like a bat out of hell, not giving up in the pouring rain and morning work time rush. We arrived at the airport with 15 minutes to board, but we still needed to do immigrations and check our luggage, running off the train only to be stopped by the transportation police at the airport turnstile, who noticed the train ticket we purchased in the rush was the wrong fare. We were then pulled aside and had to pay a fine of 75 euros for not buying the airport fare train ticket. Oh my gosh. I can just imagine the amount of frustration at that moment, uh, Abby writes, I felt defeated, one last kick from Paris, my husband and I angry at ourselves for missing the alarm, running to the train, purchasing, purchasing the wrong ticket, only to be spanked at the gate. <laughs> and we were screwed and stuck in Paris. But there is a silver lining here because she says, as we made our way to the baggage desk, we found out our flight home was delayed. So... That must have been that moment where you found out the flight was delayed and you're still gonna make it. That must have been such, you know, like a hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah thing, right? I can just, like I said, I can just imagine how stressful that must have been. And that's absolutely not the way that you want the last day of your trip to be, right? Jeez, thanks, Abby. Thank you for schadenfreude. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to Rebe Ruth, or yeah, I'm pretty sure you, Rebe, right? Rebe or Rebe? Rebe writes, first time I had ever flown, I wore a studded tank top under my jogging suit. It made all the alarms go off, so they pulled me to the side to frisk me down and remove my tank top and go through security again. I had to remove my tank top while standing in a room full of other people that were being searched as well. Needless to say, not a great experience for a first time flyer. By the way, I left that tank at the airport and boarded the flight tankless, she writes in all caps. Uh, I was not taking any more chances at my next stop. Uh, then she writes, long time subscriber and love your story times. You may use my story if you like. Well, thank you, Rebby. I have. So I think that here with this story, there is a very, very important lesson to learn. And that is nobody should ever wear a studded tank top. Okay. I'm just kidding, Rebby. If you like it, then you should wear it. Moving on, <laughs> Otto Thielman. Hi, Otto. Uh, Otto's been around for a while, too. I'm always happy to see uh, your comments, Otto. 
Otto has a long story here, <laughs> also very frustrating and kind of scary. It was 1989, pre-internet, and my first time outside the Netherlands. I went to work in a Boy Scout camp for two months with Camp America. They paid for my flight to New York and the bus to and from New York to the camp. After that, I could do a vacation for a month. That sounds like a really good deal. It was my lifelong dream to go to Walt Disney World, and this was the affordable way to do it. Oh, I'm already, my stomach is already like clenched when I hear, when I know that it's supposed to be about travel mistakes and disasters and somebody says Disney World. I'm like, oh gosh, what a nightmare. Anyways, I, I know how it ends, but just hearing those things together just make me so tense when I think of having like a Disney trip planned and then it not happening. That would be an absolute nightmare. All right. It says here, when in camp, I booked a flight from Newark to Orlando. I had no information about how long the bus from Manchester, New Hampshire, which I guess was where the camp was, to New York would take, but I expected it to take as long as it did when I went to the, went the first time to my camp. I had a long wait in Boston, but when I went back, it didn't. I was hoping to arrive at 8 a.m. at the Port Authority bus terminal, but I arrived at 1 a.m. Oh, so he got there much earlier. Now I understand it a little bit more than the first time I read it. So instead of the bus taking the whole night to get there, he got there like at one in the morning. He writes, I had no place to stay, no mobile phones existed, and the bus terminal was filled with thousands of homeless people. I was very scared and I didn't know what to do. Uh, I first started to walk around, but people came up offering me drugs and other services. <laughs> I was so scared, and the $2,000 in traveler checks and the purse around my neck under my t-shirt felt like it was a nice place to stick a knife. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't blame them. Their living conditions were terrible. The only way to survive the whole thing was to try and disappear into the setting, so I went to sit on the floor with my back against the wall. I only had 15 pounds of stuff with me, a weekend bag and a little backpack. Uh, that was another mistake, he writes, uh, but here it was a savior to not have that much stuff with me. So after a while, I lay down and used the bag as a pillow and hugged my backpack to my chest. I fell asleep, crazy, but he writes, I had been very ill in the camp just before I left and still felt weak and tired. About six hours later, I was kicked in my stomach by a security officer. Oh, Otto, I'm so sorry. He told me people, started, uh, people were starting to arrive and I needed to leave. I bought my ticket to Newark uh, and left as soon as I could. Uh, at the airport, the hostess at the counter offered me to have an earlier flight to Orlando instead of the 2 p.m. flight I had, but I refused. I needed to get a grip on this journey and things needed to go as planned. I can totally understand uh, what you mean there. So uh, it continues. <laughs> Otto writes, that afternoon I arrived in Orlando and took a cab to a cheap hotel in downtown Orlando. Downtown Orlando. Otto. Otto, Otto, Otto. Uh, he writes, I didn't know Walt Disney World wasn't near, but luckily there was a bus service that only cost a dollar to get me to and from Walt Disney World. I had a great vacation in Florida. Uh, and when I was going back, I had three days in Manhattan. I dreaded to go back and also didn't book a room in advance. Otto, you're giving me ulcers, Otto. This is really, really hard to read. <laughs> Otto just took a bus up to, uh, to New York and thought, oh, I'll find a hotel room when I get there. Uh, I called a lot of hotels from the payphone at the airport to see if rooms were available. Um, but none were available. After trying about eight hotels, I called the Hilton at Newark. I had no money to eat, but at least I had a place to stay. After that, I continued the list in the travel book and found a hotel that had one room left, but I had to be there before 1 p.m. I had no time to get uh, to the bus, uh, so I decided to take a cab, and when I walked out of the hotel, there was a tall man asking me, Taxi, sir? And I said, yes, please, how much? He said, $25, sir. And I said, okay. We walked along a huge line of yellow taxis until uh, he opened the back door of a huge silver stretched limo. This is getting nice. I liked at him, uh, I looked at him again, but this time actually looking, and for the first time I noticed this was a tall black man in an amazing gray suit with a cap on and a beautiful smile that told me he was amused by my reaction. How much? I asked again, and he again told me the amount, uh, so I hopped in the back. After a minute or so, his voice came through the intercom asking if he could lower the glass divider so we could talk. And I had a wonderful conversation with him about my travel and his life as a taxi driver in New York City. 
I asked him not to stop in front of the hotel. <laughs> Scared they would raise the price when they saw me getting out of this amazing limo. I still ended up hating my hotel in Manhattan, but I had a wonderful vacation regardless. Otto, oh my gosh, there's so many things to say about this story, but, um, you know, as, as frustrating and, and scary that might have been at the time, these are things that, you know, years later, when you tell the story, it just seems so... It's it's so interesting. It seems so rich. You know what I mean? Like, if everything goes right, then of course people have fun things to talk about. But things like this are also so interesting. And also, uh, it's it's the best lesson to learn, the best way to learn the lesson, isn't it? Because I'm sure you have never made any of these mistakes again. At least I, I hope uh, you haven't. All right, I'm gonna read one more story, talk about one more story here. And like I said, there are so many good stories. So uh, go to that video from last week and read through all the comments. It's very entertaining and uh, kind of frustrating as well. This one is from Nancy Reich. Nancy writes, when I first started cruising in the 80s, uh, I, <laughs> did you also have great big hair and did you wear shoulder pads? Um, by the way, I also grew up in the 80s, so no hate. Uh, so, when I first started cruising in the 80s, I had a good friend with a saltwater aquarium in his home. On a cruise to the Caribbean, I collected a bag of beach rocks and coral for him to use in his tank. Isn't that illegal? I don't know. I didn't want to pack them in my checked bag, so I put them at the bottom of my carry-on. When you put your suitcase out in the hall on the last night of the cruise, you have to pack everything that you had on that night in your carry-on, is what she's saying. Um, I stuffed them on top of the contents of my carry-on and we went off to the airport. Of course, when my bag went through the x-ray scanner, they saw a bunch of weird, unreadable objects at the bottom of the bag. The agent gave me a steely look and came to the end of the conveyor and grabbed my bag. What's in your bag? He growled. I hesitated because I really couldn't remember what I had put in there, and I'm sure uh, that seemed suspicious. He unzipped the bag, reached in, and the first thing he grabbed were my day-old, wrinkled, extra-large granny panties. <laughs> he pulled my underwear out and held them up like a white surrender flag. It was probably only a second or two, but it felt like he held them up for minutes. Still very embarrassing. All the while, I'm holding up the rest of the line and everyone is watching my debasement. I was mortified. I can totally imagine. <laughs> he, discovered the rock. he discovered the rocks. I got scolded, but he let me keep them and sent me on my way. Lesson learned, at all times, be cognizant of what you pack in your carry-on. Very good words to go by, um, Nancy. And thank you so much for sharing that story. If I shared your story in this video, then please send me a private message with your address because I want to send you a little special something. Don't get really excited. I mean, it's really little and insignificant, but uh, if you are a fan of this channel, I know that you will enjoy getting what it is I want to send you. So uh, thanks everybody for hanging out here. I hope you're gonna have a great weekend and or I hope you've had a great weekend. Thanks for coming back here every weekend and uh, sitting down in front of the red sofa with me. I'll be back next weekend with another video like this and um, that's it. Bye-bye.